All right, and here we are still in series parallel circuits. Um, we're still looking at faults. This time we're looking at um, a shorted fault in the series portion of our circuit. So we are going to start by shorting our only series component, which happens to be R1. So I'm right now um, putting a wire that goes around R1 and provides an alternate path for current. So current, of course, chooses the path of least resistance, and so we'll go through the wire around R1 rather than going through R1. And in that way, we short around R1. And so we find that our series parallel becomes a parallel circuit. And now that we have figured out where current is going, we will take a look at resistance. So we did have 3K resistance, which was the uh, combined ohmic value of our two parallel branches and the addition of our series resistor. Of course, we no longer have our series resistor, so our ohmic value is going to change to just the combination of our two parallel branches, which is, of course, um, 1K ohms. So we see that resistance has gone down. Again, this is a great opportunity to look at um, Ohm's Law Arrow Theory Logic, and we'll put that up here. If we know that our voltage stays the same and our resistance is going down, we can easily determine that our current should be going up. So let's look at total current. We did have 4 milliamps of total current. Now, of course, because resistance has changed, we no longer have that. We have our voltage, which is 12, divided by our new ohmic value of 1,000 ohms, and we see a new current of 12 milliamps. All right, let's look at branch current now that we've looked at total current. So we know that um, each one of our branches will see 12 volts applied. So that original current of 2 milliamps is going to change. We are going to have 12 volts divided by 2K, and we will see 6 milliamps in branch 1. Of course, branch 2 is going to be similarly affected. We did have 2 milliamps. Again, we have the same voltage divided by the same resistance, so we end up with another 6 milliamps, which makes perfect sense from our um, parallel circuits um, when we were looking at those calculations because we know that the current through branch 1 and branch 2 will total up to um, our total current. So. Since they both have the same ohmic value, both branches, we see an even distribution of current into branch 1 and branch 2. And then um, uh, when those are combined, we see our total current of 12 milliamps. Let's take a quick look at voltage drops. Um, the voltage across R1, of course, is going to change from 8 volts. It's now going to be 0 volts because we take um, 0 ohms and multiply it by our total current, which is 12 milli. And get zero volts. Anything multiplied by zero will give me zero. Now, um, reverting back to what we know of parallel circuits, we know that uh, voltage is dropped um, the same everywhere in a parallel circuit on all the branches. So in this case, um, because there are no series components anymore in the circuit, we see our applied volt voltage dropped across both branch 1 and branch 2, which only have one component of R2 and R3, so both R2 and R3 will see our applied voltage of 12 volts. Um, and so pretty quick and easy on the um, series short in a series parallel circuit. Um, next we are going to cover a short out in our parallel of our series parallel.